Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about cars and trucks and motorcycles and uh, all types, SUVs, dogs, general conversation, attitude shall prevail, and hey, it's Monday, President's Day, which, wow. Oh, how the time just continues to rock around us and move so fast around and blah, blah, blah. And wow, the Ford Power Boost got a little tension yesterday at the uh, car meet. Love the truck. Really do. That thing's just so nice. Has a room with it for the others. That's my saying sometimes. And good car show, good car. The passion for the vehicles was prevalent. And just a beautiful day yesterday. Come on, Pipes. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, let's go, get in, get in. And yeah, so nice, I got the Harleys out. And we did some Harley riding, got the Challenger out from under its plastic cover. This car, I just love this color. And this, the scheme, the paint theme is from the uh, 70s. You know, this Gold Rush color is from the past. I mean, that's something that's, which won the hearts over so many of the Dodge Challenger and the Mopar product is it's the past that's you know created the uh, the passion, including myself, to own the Dodge Challenger because when I was growing up, I so so wanted the 1970 Hemi Cuda, 71. You know, I so wanted the Mopar Heritage, and I just. Uh, I I had I bought I bought some some of the Mopar products because they're all used. And did I ever dream that one day the past would come to be the future? I mean, beyond believable. It's just really beyond believable. And this car here, so like the California type of, you know, to me, I, I lived in California growing up. So this whole theme of the Gold Rush it just seems like the California type of uh, color would have been. The so-called uh, look in the day. And it's a love or hate. I mean, you kind of like this look or you don't. But I just think that Dodge did a really great job. And I bought this car because you can't buy this color package anymore. This is one of 34 of the Gold Rush package with the red eye motor. So anybody watching my channel be like, oh, I've seen those things all over the place. Not a red eye, wide body, Hellcat. You've seen the Scat Pack. I had one. That's the irony. A Scat Pack 392 with the TA package with all the stripes, manual. And, and then she crossed the bridge and she'd rather have the Mustang. So I parted with the Scat Pack. And then down the road, I found this. And when I first saw that car, when Dodge first introduced this car available in this paint scheme, I guess it was back in 2020, I guess, 2021, I think. 2020 and 2021, I think, is a two years they did the paint theme. I was like, wow. But I had a red octane uh, Challenger, wide body, Hellcat, red eye. And I just like, you know, why would I, why would I buy that? Got to get my office here. And that, and get rid of my, you know, octane red Hellcat. Then here's the Hurleys. I rode the Hurleys here yesterday too. Just kind of show you these as well. And boy, just the, the Hurley, you just can't beat the Hurley flavor. You really can't. I mean, even though it's such a different bike from the Indian, it is such a different ride. It really is. It's such a much more cramped, rigid ride. I mean, but I, lo I love the bike and the kid loves the street bop. I mean, should. You know, the Harleys in the end, they're just the cooler bikes. It's just, just the whole, I guess, the uh, the base of what they have. You know, dealer infrastructure, the following. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Geez, always something to talk about. And let's and get the President's Day conversations going. And let's get the past conversations going. Let's get the future. I mean, just so many things. That we can all talk about. I can talk about. I'm like, that's duty. They are. Look at that. Yeah, looks like you're ready to go to work. 
You too? What are you two gonna do? You're gonna start barking. Right. So let me get my, my little thing set up here. And everything else going on. Got the heat going. Not really that cold. And <clears throat> all right. So yeah, what are we gonna talk about? Well, I had a lot of different ideas, just so many ideas. Not enough time for me to I already talk a lot. I know that. And I just uh, thought to myself, what would be a good conversation today? And actually, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking past, the past and the future. But then I started thinking, President's Day, do I make it the uh, cars and politics, which I know a lot of people are like, I, I can't stand it when it goes to politics. I get all that. I really do. But for me, huh, the cars revolve around politics. I mean, sadly, I hate to break the bad news, but the politics are driving their cars away from us and changing the way we can have our fun time. And that's, you know, that's, <laughs> if you don't understand that, you don't want to understand it. Well, I get it. But yeah, so let's <clears throat> we'll start with the, like the presidents. I just to myself, in my time of knowledge of really being abreast to being paying attention, even when I was younger, a teenager in my 20s, I really didn't give a rat's ass what was going on with the political parties in the world. I just wasn't there. I was having fun in life. And I was just having, you know, I was not, I was more focused on getting my career going. I worked seven days a week. I mean, it's just, you know, it was just a whole different era. I, I mean, I'm not embellishing you. I worked six days a week right out of high school. And then as I progressed on, I was then, you know, working multiple jobs. And then I started business. I mean, I just had time. So when I try to connect... The, the presidents, for me, yeah, mine would be, well, I was a kid for the Nixon era and the Johnson era and for the Harold, Gerald Ford era and the Jimmy Carter era, even though it looks like he's getting ready to pass away. We're going to have a president's funeral probably here before long. And But then Ronald Reagan came along, and that was huge for the movie actor to become a president of the country. And for what he, how he moved this country so much, and take down that wall, right, to, to Gorbachev, to open up the uh, European unions, I guess. And so, so then I think, where I kind of start connecting the dots more is where I was a little bit more in tune was when Bill Clinton came on board. And you think about this, Rush Limbaugh, it wasn't for Bill Clinton. Would Rush Limbaugh have become who he is? Because it's, you know, it's, for the most part, it's the hate. It's the hate. You know, it's the, the, one lib the one side of the party hates this guy, and then the other side of the party hates that person. Then you have, you know, the journalists and the political bias and blah, blah, blah. So, and I'm not really here to create that in my forum by any means, but I think it's interesting for us as individuals or the car motorhead enthusiasts to just kind of take a reflection on the presidents today of the past and the future. And I think we can kind of put those together with the automotive world, where in so many aspects today, we're living in the past. So right now, I'm getting ready to talk about the past presidents and the things in the past. And I think to myself, the automotive world today, in so many aspects, is living in the past. And some of you are like, well, living in the past, all we hear about is the future of EV vehicle and a, the new governing bodies. We're going to get rid of ICE and and so on and so forth. But then, man, I could have my coffee. Man, look at this here. Got my. Can I drink my coffee for everybody? Does that offend you? If it does, sorry. I don't mean to. Just if you want me to go off the side? Let me turn the camera off. If we were in a city face to face. And you were drinking a cup of coffee, and I was drinking a cup of coffee. I mean, wouldn't that be appropriate? Now, stuff in your face, I think that's really bad. Anybody get some like, video and start stuffing their face, I think that's pretty bad. Picking your nose, you know, whatever, you know, just, yeah, kind of keep these things to yourself. Just do whatever you got to do on your side, right? So, in the past, I think today, what's interesting today in today's car market, more than ever, people bought the past vehicles. Because of the new vehicle shortage, the pandemic created the challenge of the automotive world to continue to buy, to continue to produce 
for buyers new cars and so it reverted to the used cars so the used car market exploded during the pandemic because people still wanted to get a car replace a car whatever it may be the circumstances and it reignited people buying the past vehicles like look at me if you watch my channel you see that i bought two ram trucks that in my world are ancient for what i've ever done and what i've ever done for i don't even know 30 years or more i've never bought you know six seven eight year old cars trucks per se so for my ram white truck 2014 that thing's getting ready to be close to 10 years old the black ram truck is 2015. That truck is eight years old. It'll be going to nine years old as soon as this new model year comes this fall. Wow. So I've bought past technology trucks, but we but we love them. The trucks are nice. They're still very up to date for the most part in so many aspects of which you could buy brand new without all the bells and whistles that drive you nuts. So in some aspects, I think that many people, if you watched my video yesterday with the gentleman with the green BMW, if you watch it and really critiqued it there, he was adamant because I asked him, I said, what do you love about this car and what don't you love about the car? And the first thing, you know, I should say in his conversation, he was like, there's just too much technology. He was like, it's just over, it's over, it's too much. To, and then he owns the Ferrari of the past. That you saw that video a few weeks ago when I met him and did a whole uh, review of that car for him. And and so he's an individual. There's a perfect example. An individual. He loves the past. I mean, he loves the past vehicles. And and so, anyways, so today more than ever, the car automotive industry is catering to the past, meaning. The dealership's infrastructure is relying on the, you know, cars that were used or cars that are used, and, and even the the financing lenders and the people carrying the, the debt for these vehicles, they're buying the past vehicles at a rate probably they haven't ever seen in the automotive industry, and it's ongoing because the automotive industry is still struggling to get product on dealers' lots. And I read an article about AutoNation and another major conglomerate that has uh, the car market, numerous dealerships throughout the country. And AutoNation, you go like a year ago, their inventory was like nine days of a new of like new cars. Now their inventory is like twenty three days, and then another big conglomerate. Their inventory used to be like 12 days or 11 days, and now it's like 24 days. or So the inventory is starting to come back, and the big mega car dealerships are con concerned that the manufacturers are going to kind of ramp up production again. And then it's going to go back to the old business model where their profits will shrink. And actually that was talked about that you go a year prior, the average profit in cars is $5,800 a car. And now today, it's like $3,900, $3,800 a car. And it cracks me up when car dealers say, oh, we're only making 50 bucks or 100 bucks off this car. It's like, I don't care how much you make off that car. It's not my business. Did I pay the same price as that guy just paid up the street? That's all that matters. It's all that matters. Anybody at car sales and watching my YouTube channel, it's the worst pitch in the world. And it really irritates me when the GM sales guy walks up and he starts telling me about how they're barely making any money in the car, blah, blah. It's like, dude, just go sit down. Just go sit down. I don't care. I don't care how much money you make in this car. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is if the car is 20 grand here, is it 20 grand up the road? If I find out the car is 10 grand up the road, I'm going to be pissed. If the car is, you know, 17. That's what it's all about. All that matters is it's the market. Are you competitive in the market? So maybe watch my channel. It's a car salesperson or car manager. Stop that rhetoric in your dealership where you go over people and tell them, oh, we're only making X money. Does, does the restaurant come up to you when you kind of question the, the price of the, the steak you're going to buy and start going, well, in the back end here, we don't really make much money. The, 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 the restaurant's struggling. And, you know, I mean, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Who, who's... Who does that? So as a dealership, if I'm managing a dealership, I'm going to train all of my people. That conversation doesn't happen. The conversation is, 
We are a very competitive dealership. We assure you, you're getting the best deal in the market, and we'll be more than happy to match anybody's price. But I can tell you right now, this is a great deal, and I can assure you, you'll see that you got a great deal. Leave it at that. You know, to go down the road of BS, it's all a bunch of BS. If you don't think people will figure that out, so yeah, how to get off that ramp, right? So if you live in the past, or you have a business model of the past. I've said for many years, the automotive industry and the car dealership infrastructure, it's still living such in the past of its tactics and how it does things, but this is the answer again. Well, it works, right? <laughs> so who wants to go to the future? Yeah, so, so for us, the car enthusiasts, what we're seeing more than ever is the future. As all we're hearing day in, day out, the future, future, even to the point the most recent information is in this country, last year, the biggest growing trend of the EV market it was like the biggest trend of people buying electric vehicles. You know, hello, I was one of them. Uh, it's now the the market is like 4.2% of the overall sales in the whole market last year in the U.S. But you go to the European flair and all these other, you know, the green beyond green agenda countries, Norway and Sweden or whatever, you know, just select countries, there are 60 to 80% of the sales are all electric vehicles, but it's all different volume. You know, I think to myself, yeah, but it's smaller. It's just, it's not, it's not America. America is all about the car, the love of the car. So when you go to the future, all we're hearing now is the constant rhetoric of the EVs of future, the EVs of future. Apparently Dodge Ram teased everybody in this new electrified, Ram Ram Lucian or whatever they call the damn thing, and now Ram has actually revealed their electric truck, which is like a Ram. And so the automotive journalists and magazines and internet world are like, blah. It's like boring Ram. Wow, you you made your electric Ram fifteen hundred looks exactly like the same truck. Well, hello, Ford F one fifty truck. Hello, I mean, <laughs> I think to myself, hey, you what you want the cyber truck? I mean. I'm amazed how people at that cyber truck. I mean, talk about lost in space episodes. I mean, sincerely, does Elon Musk deliver you the uh, the uh, RT R two D two you know figure with that vehicle to be in the back of it for you to take places and go out to the desert and search the uh, the for the aliens? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, a cyber truck for me does nothing. Goose egg, and, and be so lucky to get one. Yeah, once I can hit the market. So yeah, I'd rather have a little bit more flair and a little bit more flavor on that, not to be the. Anyway, so 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 the future. So we're being told the future, but yet so many people like the past, and some people are very content with the past, and they like the past because the past works, and that's where it kind of I think we're in a crosshairs in this country more than ever between the governing bodies and the businesses of the world and the green agenda because so many people feel very content to our past ways seem to really be successful and work. But yet we've got a whole new business model in the automotive world that's wanting to force the hand that people have to go to electric vehicles to the point that states are going to ban the sales of new ICE vehicles. And, and many people are up in arms on this, and rightfully so, because it, it's not a proven business model. It's not a proven thing that people really are happier with the electric vehicle versus the ICE vehicle. So somebody here, I think, watch my channel, would have to say that the past has such a proven track record. I mean, if you're Bill Belichick and you've got Tom Brady on your team, and the past shows him doing phenomenally well, are you going to keep him again for the future? Yeah, well, we saw how that played out, how long Tom Brady stayed in New England. And you've seen the same story with other very successful, uh, you know, athletes and, and then business people. And so you just have to think to yourself, wow, we've had so much success in this country with the past ways that we do things. But yet select individuals want to change the future of how we do things that's unproven to be the better of the two. But we're getting all caught up and wrapped up. And the divisions are, are, are starting to, to prevail in so many aspects of our life. And so for the car industry, I think that it's just like, wow, like Harley Davidson, you know, to think that Harley Davidson is going to eventually be all electric and no more ICE vehicles. 
I think, wow. But 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 your whole your whole model of your success has been the true V twin air cooled motor. Your ice, your your noise making, you're connected with the motor and the vibration and the engine noise and the and the feel of that engine when you get into it, you let off of it. I mean, there's such a connection there. It's your body and soul that literally between your legs, it's just an exhilarating feeling of fun and enjoyment. And they want to take that away for the future where you have a battery between your legs and you're going to get, you know, a zoom, zoom feel to it. I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the past, presence, and the future, because I think that it's the cars and politics conversation this morning is the past and future. And I think to myself, I look back of kind of the information that I retained as I was progressing in life and getting my career going and figuring out what seemed to make sense, for, you know, right versus wrong. And so when Bill Clinton came along, um, it just seemed like the guy was shady as all get out. You just have you ever had that feeling you just kind of listen to somebody and see how they operate and you just kind of feel like, hey, don't get too personal on me. I mean, I know. I get it. I get it. Shady YouTube guy here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just send your check to, yeah, Timbuktu. And so, so Bill Clinton, he had, what was it, the white, the water, what was it called? I'm just trying to think back. We're in Arkansas. He duped a ton of people out of the uh, real estate investments. And it was Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, um, it just seems like lots of people kind of over time disappear. It seems like people have like critical information that could possibly incriminate the Clintons. Those people just kind of seem to all of a sudden die. Has anybody noticed that? Notice that? What was it where that one attorney chased Bill Clinton forever? He just died, I think, recently. And and so because Bill and Hillary in Arkansas, then the women claims, you know, all the presidents when they run for president, all these people who run for president, all of a sudden the women come out of the closet that supposedly had relationships, inappropriate or appropriate, I don't know. So it gets all, it's all the media machine trying to persuade people from voting from that person because it was George Bush, the senior, that was just, had just ridden with uh Ronald Reagan, I guess. Is that right? Was it Ronald Reagan and Bush? And so Bush then got it one term. And then for his second term, he went up against Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton took that away from him. And yeah, so George Bush was Reagan. Then it was Bush, which he just kind of seemed to be uh, nothing too exciting happening there. And then when Bill Clinton came in, it was the, you know, it was now the entertainment. I mean, it was. Bill Clinton was entertaining for all the antics he did. And talk about the, you know, I'm the man type of attitude. So what did Bill Clinton do? Well, he created the NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which I talked about that third day. That opened the door for Walmart to become, you know, China, China Mart. And, you know, Home Depot to become China Depot. And Costco Depot or, or China Costco, and the list goes on and on and on. And how Bill Clinton was one of the really the first presidents, in my knowledge, that really changed the whole infrastructure of the world market with China and opened up the door for the heyday of China. To uh, if you go to my cheap video, you'll hear much more of that in depth. And then it was the Monica Lewinsky cigar conversation and. And, you know, Bill Clinton, I didn't have relationships with that lady and blah, blah, but his cigar did, so he didn't, right? You know that story. And what wonder what brand cigar that was. That was an awful expensive cigar. I wonder if he actually smoked it. Maybe she smoked it. I don't know. I think she smoked something else. <laughs> if you get that conversation for the other people that are of my age and understand that language, right? So... Yeah, I won't say the other word. I'm not gonna get that. I'm not gonna get that provocative here. So, so for Clinton, he, he reminds me of the of the NAFTA thing, you know. And then he, I think he opened up the private prisons, that he created the much stricter laws for the you get caught with drugs, and I think he was in the back. In the back I think all the everybody's in the back pocket for Bill Billy Boy for building all these private prisons to start throwing all these people in jail. Yeah, 
And you know, you know, you know what color mostly went there? I guess I don't know. I mean, you know, this is during uh, a lot of things. Like wow, of things went on. So then, well, I guess when Clinton kind of had his day, then we got George Bush Jr. Yeah, it's George. Is that right? It was Al Gore. And anybody who's watching my channel, I'm just going off the tip of my tongue. I have not looked at any information on the internet to do a personal, you know, AI, artificial intelligence. Yeah, the generative pre-trained transformer. I haven't joined up in that. I'm just, I'm just reading. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure people watching my channel probably have joined up in that stuff. The chat GBT, generative pre-trained transformer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, uh, anyways, so you now have George Bush Jr. running against Al Gore, the, the, uh, the climate man who's made like $500 million off his climate agenda or something like that. And, and then that was a big contest of who really won the election in 2000. And so George Bush, he, Inherited the uh, the nine one one fiasco where we went to war with Iraq. So for George Bush, what did he really accomplish besides just his country being in total? It was really bad. You know, people have no idea about two thousand one, two thousand two. The DC sniper that was in this area that was uh, in my business that that I was uh, doing. I was so exposed to that. I'm not lying to you. There were people that were being killed by the snipers right across from businesses I dealt with, right across. Like two or three businesses that I had back in that time, the, I'm not lying to you, a person was shot and killed right across the street. And then another location, another location, you talk about nerve wracking at that time. And then the anthrax um, was being put into uh, envelopes and sent to people. And people from the post office got anthrax that died you know, that we're processing the mail. Oh, my gosh, just beyond believable of what the, your tensions. People were going to the hospital because their nerves, they were just, they were fried on their, uh, there's the kid taking the big Ram truck, piped all up. Yeah, they have school today. Schools are not honoring President's Day. The federal government is. So for George Bush, he had a very tenuous time of having to deal with just total negativity in the country and fear in the country and war. And so and so once George got his run, I guess George had two runs. Yeah, I guess he did, didn't he? Yeah. So next up was Barack Obama. So for George Bush, the way I look at him, Junior, was he was just putting out fires. He was just had a constant challenge of the world war the world hate of America. And so then Obama came along, and I'll admit that Obama, he had a great pitch. Remember a Plumber Joe? Barack Obama came out. Remember the uh, the, the uh, senator that, that paid, paid for his job or something there in Chicago? What was that guy's name? He uh, Donald Trump released him, pardoned him, right before he left office. What was that guy's? The guy looked so corrupt. He looked like the Chicago thug type, thug type of guy. They got caught in conversations of, you know, buying his way into the Senate or, or threatening people. What was that guy's name? And yeah, Donald Trump pardoned him right before he left office. And I'm sure somebody here will remember that name. So for Barack Obama, his pitch was he's going to go for the little guy. He's going to go after the Wall Street guys. He's going to be the most transparent president ever in this country. But they started digging up, you know, information about him going to these radical church that was basically the hate of America. That what was it? What was that guy's name? Reverend Jock. I just can't remember all these names. I'm sure people here on my channel. So Barack was really behind the scenes, uh, supposedly. You know, he he was attending uh, religious. Uh, churches or religious church where the leader of the church just had the hate of this country to, in so many aspects. And, you know, once again, my information can be awful to hear, but I'm just trying to go back to the past of where we've been in this country with our presidents and just trying to think what each one kind of accomplished in their term for the future. And so 
So Barack Obama, he did a good pitch in trying to help the little guy, and he was going to get rid of the political donations, you know, where you, you can't buy your way into presidency by getting the most donations. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody remember those pitches? So Barack Obama, he got in his first uh, term, and it just seems like everything he pitched was actually opposite of what he did. And so then he became a second-term president, and the irony here is that was Joe Biden. So Joe Biden, it's an incredible thing that Joe Biden now will have had 12 years at the reach of the presidency. You know, two, two terms as the vice president, if I'm correct. So two terms of vice president under Obama, so there's eight years. He's going to get a presidency he's going to be at 12 years of him being in this authoritative position. So for Barack Obama, he... So he got his two terms, the 12, yeah, 2008 to 2012, and 2012, 2016. And it just seems like, wow. It seems like, in so many ways, the country became divided. But I don't, I wouldn't say radically divided, but I think it just kind of, I think it was kind of an eye opener that we had our first black president. And maybe for me as an individual, I just felt like he didn't do as much as I thought he would. For the black community, I could be wrong on that. And once again, I'm not here to be racist by any means. I'm just sharing information that that was kind of the way I kind of, I felt like, did he do more? You know, when I could be blind, he did so much, which I'm sure he did. So I'm not here to be critical that he didn't. But it just seems like it wasn't what I thought it would be as, as his presidency, of bringing this country more together versus I felt like it was a little more divided. And then we go to Trump, because Barack Obama's term ended, and then all the theory, you know, theories were that Barack Obama would be the king of the country forever, which, hmm, anybody figuring that out lately? <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, he'll be the king. They'll, he'll, they'll rewrite the Constitution so that he can just be forever a president here in this country. There was a lot of talk of that. Huh. Is anybody kind of figuring that out right now? Who's Joe Biden? Who, uh, who did Joe Biden be with? Oh, Barack Obama. That's right. Oh, interesting. All right. So for Donald Trump, he comes along. And wow. Boy, oh boy. Talk about the hate. The hate machine began. So in 2016, when Donald Trump started running for presidency, I mean, oh my gosh, 2015, I guess, 2015, 2016, the hate of the media machine. And Donald Trump, you know, he played, he played the game. Unfortunately for Donald Trump, he, he kept the hate going because he would fight back at all these journalists, fake news. I mean, he was very, you know, he was, you know, borderline too aggressive to a degree. And the media just fed off of that. And so for Donald Trump, he, he really leaves his presidency of the hate of the media machine just dividing us like never seen before and just the hate among us. On how one person just hates that, that guy like he can't believe. And then just the constant uh, Democratic Party attacking him for all these so-called um, corruption that he did. That nobody's been able to really totally prove that there was anything corrupt that he did do. But yeah, so to me, Donald Trump's tenure was the hate of the media machine like never seen. Like never seen. So then you come here to Joe Biden and his presentation was, he's the real deal. He's growing up, and he's going to bring us back together and get rid of the hate and make us all one. And he's the real guy, the real deal, that he sits in his basement. <laughs> yeah, so, so Joe Biden, first president ever elected from the basement. Yeah. I mean, for the, because of the pandemic, and but we had another president that was out being tarnished for having rallies and everything to die, and it was all about the BLM and Antifa could go out and riot in the streets and, and burn the cities to the ground, and there was no pandemic-related challenges to that, but if you went to a Donald Trump rally, then there was huge consequences to that because you're infecting everybody with your COVID and killing everybody. Does everyone remember these conversations? Does everyone remember these conversations? So Joe Biden, he wrote off of the hate. 
Joe Biden was elected off the hate of the media of another individual. And that's how he won the presidency. Because that is the, that's what a person that voted for Joe Biden will tell you is they hated Donald Trump so much that they voted for somebody else just to get rid of him. But yet it's the media machine that, for the most part, created the hate like never seen in our country. So for the future, so it kind of keeps on, 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 on page here. So the future, we now have the future at our hands and a president that's dictating the future of this country, never seen in modern times of what he believes is going to be better for us as individuals in a better country. But as we're going through the steps, it doesn't seem like things are getting better. We're at war with Russia. We're giving Ukraine. He's over there right now in Ukraine. He just gave another half billion dollars to keep on fighting Russia. China is getting very impatient with us. China is literally now coming to the table and saying, we're going to start helping Russia fight this war. Wow. Russia is getting much more, I should say, China is getting much more of an attitude that they're are they seeing the weakness in our country? Are they seeing that we're that we're using up all of our military warfare to fight Russia to make us more possibly the less of the two? Is China using their military warfare and military funds to give to Russia at this point to fight Ukraine? I mean, they're, they're kind of starting to talk a little bit that language, but what are we getting out of Ukraine? I mean, so the future of, of Zelensky in Ukraine I mean, what what is it? You know, so we're now we're sitting in a country with a president and governing bodies that are spending money at all time high. The future, the Infl Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to give billions of dollars for the automotive industry, electric vehicle industry, the superconductor chip industry. The list goes on and on and on for the future at the taxpayer's expense. So more than ever. You and I are living in the future of spending money that we have to pay for it later. Does anybody know these stories of the people that, that go and put themselves, continue to borrow, borrow, borrow monies and, and buy things? Hey, wait a second. Don't get too personal here. It's, it's pretty close to home, doesn't it? But it starts to spend all their money, and, and they're just living in the future all the time, but they don't really have any money per se today. Wow. So this same president and this governing body we have in our country right now, more than ever, they are living in the future at the taxpayer's expense of the United States of America, who is us, that is funding the what ifs of what we don't that we don't know is a proven uh, track record that really does benefit us better and may actually be worse. And the, but this this sitting administration doesn't want to live in the past on the factor of how they manage the money and how they see things to be better, but instead they use the past for presidents to say that people look like me enjoy seeing people that don't look like me being lynched. Beyond believable. And this is a guy that was personal friends with Senator Byrd out of West Virginia, who was a known Ku Klux Klan um, participant. I mean, just beyond believable. That we have the media machine that just continues to to pet this guy named Joe Biden, yeah, it's pretty bad. And now here, they now Joe Biden supports the WHO, W H O, of um, really controlling the CDC of our country. International countries are going to come control our country now. The World Health Organization will have the rights to tell us what we can and can't do in this country for our own well being of our health and manage our health system here. Yes, that is trying to be passed by Joe Biden's administration and eliminate the Senate from having the last call on that bill of giving the WHO the rights to our country's uh, information on all of our health. Wow. And right now, the next thing that's going on, unbeknownst to people, you go to the doctor and get, get your, you have, you have a cold, you're sick, or you go there for whatever reason, they're going to ask you if you've had the vaccine or not. And it's coded. So now keeping documentation. Every person now goes to the doctor. If you go to the hospital, wherever you go, they're going to ask you a question. Have you had the vaccine? The smartest thing to say is it's none of your business. If you answer yes or no, it's documented. And they're building uh, a database to most likely use that against the people who haven't been vaccined. So to build a base that 
the non-vaccinated are a threat to the well-being of this country. And so you won't be able to travel. You won't be able to get this. You won't be able to do that. And you probably won't be qualified for insurance benefits. Yeah, that's going on as we speak right now. There's a new code. Look it up that the governing body of this country is wanting to enforce on the healthcare providers and your doctors and everybody else. Wow, it gets deep. All right, everybody, out of time. Long conversations, I get. My apologies, I like to talk. Hey, it's President's Day. Are you actually happy with the guy that's in, is it supposed to be happy President's Day? Or is it President's Day? Are you actually happy with the president of this country right now? What's your thoughts? Hey, I'd like to hear them. So everybody, stay tuned, stay informed, stay safe, and God bless.